And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There's no question that soccer, or football in most countries, is the most famous sport in the world, so it makes sense that there are more board games about soccer than any others, especially with the World Cup coming up later this year and the sheer level of excitement that it produces. Uh, here we have a game here called, um, I guess, just Tolje Football. Uh, this is, I believe, from the Czech Republic. Uh, it is a game that, it's a pretty big box here, but it, it actually has a pretty cool look to it. In fact, the components inside look pretty cool too. Uh, well, none of that. I'll just throw them at the table and look at them. Okay, there's no denying that this game is a visual treat. It's three boards that are held together by two plastic pieces on both sides, and you can see that there's actual physical nets that sit into these middle sockets, and there's and there is um, flags on each side. Now there are rules for corner kicks and penalties and all that stuff online, uh, but I'm just going to be talking about the base game that comes in the box here. Now you'll notice that there's different players with different color bases. You have your standard 11 players, and the colors are basically just to show what kind of player that player is. We got your forwards, we got your midfielders, we got your defenders, and you have your, your goalie. And they each have a starting spot on the board. And as the game progresses, you are actually able to substitute perhaps a different color, and maybe I want more midfielders, because they each have special abilities that they can use. All players can move three spaces in any direction. However, the forwards can move five spaces if they're heading towards the opponent's goals. Defenders can move five spaces if they're going back towards their own goal. And midfielders have a card called the long pass that only they can use. Uh, you can pick one player to be your captain, and that player gets all the special abilities of all the positions. And so you're able to do that. Each player is also going to get a bunch of uh, cards. They have long shots. This is basically lets you make a long shot. You'll roll it when you're shooting. You get to roll a die and double the length of that die when shooting. You have the long pass where you can roll a die and triple the length of that when passing to somebody else. You have some big moves, which each turn you get to move three of your guys. This lets you, when you play one of these, you can move six, but you can only do this when you don't have the ball. Substitution cards let you substitute a player in. And a big save lets you move uh, your goalie, uh, or let you extend the save area of your goalie. Now, defenders also have a special ability where you can't move past or kick past the two spots next to them. The goalie has that same ability, but it's in 360 degrees around him. Underneath this, uh, or this guy here, you can see here's the ball. And on a player's turn, they can move three of their players. And if someone has a ball at the end of their turn, they will roll a die to pass that ball. They can curve it 45 degrees. The ball might just end up somewhere in the field, or it might end up to another player, in which case they can pass it again. If on your turn you end up next to somebody else who has the ball, you can fight that person for the ball basically by both of you rolling a die, and the higher die will win and take the ball from the defender and actually move to their spot, also taking the ball from them. If you're close enough to the goal, you can try to shoot at the goal. The goalie can try to make a save. If, it, if it's going to hit the goal post, you have to roll a special die to see if it bounces off the goal post or not. And then the goalie has a chance where he can make a miraculous save, even if it does go through the goal posts. Other than that, though, you just have to try to get into a spot where you're not, you can kick the ball and it's not next to any player, and it goes in the net, then you reset and go again. Now, the board comes with this big scoreboard. I don't have it set up here, but um, it sits next to the, the table here, and this keeps track of the score and goes all the way up to nine. I don't think you'll see that happen too often. And also, you can keep time by moving these dials here, and each time someone takes a turn, you keep track of time, and at the end of a certain amount of time, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. I should mention that these cards here are one-shot cards and can't be used more than once, but you have several of the different types. Now, I have to say that this, this box is a little too big for my taste, although, the, like I said, the game really looks good when it's set up on a table, has a really good feel to it. 
The deal is this, I'm not sure, there's a lot of soccer games out there, and I'm not sure that this one offers anything that the other ones don't, or really anything better. The one thing that this game has, besides the cool components, I'd almost be tempted to take the components from this and you know maybe use the rules of another soccer game, the cool components, uh, it has the, the card play, which is interesting. You have a certain number of times you can do this. But this is all mitigated by the die roll. You roll dice and hope that the ball reaches your opponent. You kick it around. It has the feel of soccer slightly, but it's going to be lots of, it, well, I mean, back and forth and back and forth and back and a ball stolen and finally shot. So I think it does a good job, but it's still a little too slow paced, I think, to capture the true feel of soccer. I'm not convinced that soccer can be made into a very effective board game. I played some fun soccer games, but I've never played one where I was like, wow, this is great. So I don't know if that's possible. I think this game is okay. I don't dislike it. It was entertaining to run my people back and forth and looked good and play the cards and roll the dice and cheer for high rolls and boo for low rolls or you know, be upset when you didn't get that exact roll you needed to pass the ball from one to another. But it was just a little too lucky for my taste, especially with how big and grandiose the game looks. Now, I, like I said, I did not go online and download the penalties and corner kicks and all that stuff. And maybe that might help a little, but that wouldn't really change the base game. So if you're looking for something that looks cool, and I think that this game is going to be promoted more in Europe than it will be here because uh, the, they have the different um, uh, country flags here, but it's obviously uh, specific players in the back and specific players on the, some of the cards and on the, on the player shirts. And I don't know who any of these folks are. Forgive me. I don't know all these players. And so I think for people who do that, that will be a, a bigger draw to them. So if you're looking for an entertaining soccer game, maybe this is what you're looking for, but I think this has still not hit that spot. I think the die rolling is just a little too lucky involved with a lot of maneuvering around the board. Um, Looks pretty though. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. The door! Yeah. Yeah.